Welcome along guys and uh, welcome back to the H2 on the channel. The repair work has been completed. We have the new panel on, repaired carbon fibre piece. Thank you Barry, you're a legend. New crankcase, new end can from Van Diemen. We're all back together and uh, it's been a long time coming. I've not ridden this bike for, blimey, probably 10 months since I, I dropped it. Maybe something like that. Nine or 10 months since I dropped it and did the damage and then I couldn't, you know, the water bottle, a new water bottle and inner panel. Panel is also new here. I've done a video of repairing this and putting it back together. I'll put a link at the top. Go and take a look in case you haven't seen it. But she's back. She's on the road. She's complete. She looks beautiful once more. It's time to go and ride this bike. And really, I need to make some decisions. There's a lot of new bikes I've ridden recently which I really like, like the new Diavel, for example, the M1000R I really loved. And, you know, I could sell this and get either of those because these are worth quite good money at the moment. But since Top Gun came out, and since you can no longer buy these in the UK, the money's gone up on these. And these, this is probably worth about 24K now. Obviously, I've done some bits and bobs to this, the full system, the carbon bits, you know. Obviously, I've got all the standard stuff. People always say, oh, yeah, you've devalued it by modifying it. I've got the original kit. I could turn this back to 100% stock if I wanted to. But I, I like it like this, and I think with all the H2R, you know, 24 grand I might get for this bike. It's only got about 3,800 miles on it. It's hardly got any miles on it at all. So, um, so yeah, so I need to decide if... I want to keep this which could these could keep going up this could keep appreciating so if i buy a new diavel or whatever i buy it's going to start depreciating i mean it's not all about money but that's a big consideration for me i'm not a rich person despite what a lot of people seem to think when i've got an h2 worth 24 grand and this is my say i don't have savings this is my savings right here this is my savings so you know if something were to happen to this and i always have bad luck with this but anyway enough of all that let's save all this chat for when we're rolling for now dropsy roll that intro So let's jump aboard and remind myself what this bike is all about and why it is so special and it is so special this machine. I mean I've done videos on why this machine is so special. You know and it is a very special bike. <laughs> Don't drop it again Chopsy. We may have to go down that, do go in that same junction again. I dropped it on, just to, to make sure I don't get PTSD, just to beat the junction. So the Ninja H2. I've had this bike since it was well, it had one mile on the clock when I bought it. It's a 2017 bike. I bought it 2019, I think. I've had it four years now. This could be my fifth season on it. I don't know. A long time for me that is. And yeah, this was my dream bike. I never thought I'd ever own one of these. This was like on a pedestal, dream machine. And one came up for good money. I had, I'd sold my GSX-R at the time. I'd sold my 500 EXC Supermoto at the time. So I actually had a little bit of money and I, I managed to buy this by combining all of my funds, all of my savings, all of the money I got from selling my bikes. I managed to get myself the dream bike and this is it. So this bike, to, to sell this bike, I mean I've had it four years, I've had a lot of fun on it, I've kept the mileage low, you know it's not an everyday bike this, and I've kept the mileage low thinking, you know, because it is my savings this bike, you know, and uh, that's one of the reasons for keeping it and since it started appreciating, you know, there seems to be even more reason to keep it. The money's on getting more money return with this being a bike at the moment than I would if this was sat in a savings account. So this isn't just a motorcycle for me. But it's always a bit risky having your savings tied up in a vehicle. Because as I found out, you know, a momentary lapse in concentration can be very, very expensive. Listen to that, jumping on this. It is something, it is rather incredible, this bike. 
and I've done mods to this to make it more comfortable so I've got the Kawasaki 20 millimeter risers on here they might be 12 millimeters but they're a little bit higher the bars are a little bit higher than the standard H2 so it's a little bit more comfortable and also I've put the Louis Moto seat gel in and seat cover and I've made the seat more comfortable because they're very hard stock on these and this is actually now pretty darn comfortable I'd say this is as comfortable as my KHS XR maybe even a little bit more comfortable than that now actually it feels massively wide between my legs it feels massively wide I have just stepped off a street triple though so that's an incredibly thin bike between your legs but this feels really wide massive in front of me here you know the, you, you certainly get the view that you're riding something a little bit special when you're on this bike and a lot of people say on an H2 they say oh god they're so heavy you know, it doesn't handle it's just a big heavy bike yeah they are it is a heavy it is heavy it's not like your normal 1000cc sports bikes like your s1000 double r's which are sort of 200 kilos these are 236 kilos from the factory now i've obviously got the full titanium system on here i've got a lot of titanium bolts and lithium battery on this one as well i'd say this bike i've not had it weighed but i'd say it probably weighs 220 now i'm guessing 220 ish you know that exhaust system <laughs> That exhaust system, the stock one, weighs an absolute, that's got to weigh 10 kilos just for the exhaust, so there's been some massive savings on this, and is it as flickable as an S1000RR? No, probably not, but it does still handle, and you can still push this on quite well through the twisties, so don't think that this is just a straight line bike, this is very much a sports bike. go yeah that front brake's a bit poor because it's been sat around 10 months i must have got a bit of grease and wd-40 on the front brakes so getting better but this sitting is so grunty the beauty of this supercharger is that it gives the bike pull and grunt i mean normally a straight four would be very flat you know because you've got supercharger there You've got a real good bit of go, a good bit of pull initially from the off. Well, the gear change seems beautiful since I fitted that race torques, race torque shift support. I must say that feels much more precise on the gear shift. I guess the problem with this bike is it's just stupidly fast. <laughs> That's the issue. I mean, this one is mildly tuned at about 248 horsepower at the back wheel. That's like the first level of tune on these bikes. That's just correcting the fueling and making the throttle blade stay open at 100% throttle because standard, these are quite heavily restricted to stop them from being too mental. So it's 248 horsepower at the back wheel, which is ridiculous. And it's you know it's too far it's too fast for the road i'm the first one to, to admit it it's too fast for the road because and in first and second with that much power it's just really wheeling you know you open it up it, it just wheelies so you have to shut the throttle so you can't use the full power Woo! and then third gear of course you can open it up but then of course you're doing triple digits you're absolutely motoring oh backfire i think it feels a little bit harder to move around on than my gsxr maybe maybe it's a tank width also because you've got these like bolsters behind the seat i can feel those with the back of my ass and my big fat bum I'm sort of locked into this a little bit, so it's not quite as easy to move around on than the GSXR is. And it feels very wide, you know, and the pegs are actually a little bit higher and a little bit further back on this as well, I think, than the GSXR. 
So, so it, is, it is a little bit more cramped than the GS6, I'd say. Well, here it is. Here's the junction I dropped it at. Last time I was here, I dropped, on this bike, I dropped it. I came up here, and the car, big lorry, came the other way and forced me out, and then I came to a stop. This is uphill here. It's a horrible junction. I came to put my foot down, and, and the foot just wouldn't come off the pegs. There we go. We've managed to navigate that junction without dropping it this time. Whoa! <laughs> this bike, when it's... I've got what I tend to do on this because that 248 horsepower map is very aggressive. You know, it's quite aggressive on the throttle and you have to really finesse it to be smooth. So I tend to use the rain map on this quite a lot and I'm going into town and stuff just to make it a little bit easier. Because, you know, you, you, you have to finesse the throttle on this bike. You can't just open this up. It's too powerful for that. You very, very rarely give this bike anything more than half throttle. That's half throttle. Even the half throttle was ridiculous. <laughs> I can't. Oh, there's a lot of weight on your wrist when you're braking. Oh, it's madness. That is madness. It is special, this bike. It is very, very special. I mean, it's not an everyday machine. Uh, but any stretch of the imagination but it's lovely to bring out occasionally when the weather's good and just be in awe of it really is something I don't think there'll ever be another bike like it now honestly don't I don't think there'll be another bike produced like this not in this day and age this could end up being the pinnacle of the combustion powered motorcycles from a power point of view, you know, the, the most powerful production motorcycle ever produced. And I think, I don't think that'll be beaten now. Hey, it's Dale Boy. It's Dale Boy. Come on, Dale Boy. Only fools and horses. The Americans don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Bloody Dale Boy. So yeah, tough choices really. Do I keep this? and potentially watch it appreciate, or have these now peaked and they're now going to start going down again. Were they, were they just peaked by that Top Gun and Tom Cruise having one in Top Gun? Has that pushed the prices up and now's the time to sell because now maybe they're stabilising and coming back down again? I don't know. I don't know. I normally get these things completely wrong. I mean, I, I had a Sierra Cosworth, the, the three-door one, with the big whale tail. You know, as soon as I sold that car, they started going absolutely mental. And they're now worth like 50, 60,000 pounds. I don't want to do that again with this bike. And as I say, I'm not a rich man. This is my savings, this bike here. Now, I can't afford to really sell this and buy something else which is going to depreciate quickly because you now this is my nest egg <laughs> this machine I mean, I could just sell it and put the money in the bank you know and then have some savings and be safe <laughs> but what fun is that I've never been a saver I've been a spender always been the way you know and by buying bikes over the years you know this is all mine there's no loan here you know this is what I've managed to save my money and put my money into so to sell this I need to be sure and to sell this and just buy an ordinary bike you know which is going to depreciate I quite like I fancy a Pikes Peak Multistrada as well I need to ride a Pikes Peak Multistrada I think that could be a fantastic bike and I, and I really might like one of those and the Diablo and the M1000R, but you know, this. I think this will always be worth more money because it's always going to hold its money 
and that is a consideration people say oh it's only man yeah, get what you want but yeah that's that's true but this is my savings <laughs> this is what but again i think well i keep dropping this things keep happening to this bike you know is it going to come a point where i'll just end up totaling this yes yeah, insured and all of that but i bet you'd struggle to get the full value back on the insurance so i, I don't know what would you do guys let me know in the comments what you would do would you sell this because this is you know this isn't an everyday bike i can't ride this all the time you now it's pretty uncomfortable if i had a diavel you know i could ride that everywhere i could make use of it and and i think i think a diavel would hold its money quite well i think ducatis do hold their money quite well but obviously probably not like this over time this is probably only ever going to go up because you cannot buy these anymore in Europe. They're not Euro 5 compliant, so they stopped selling them. You can still buy the SX, you can't buy the Ninja HD anymore. And you can buy the ZH2, of course. But you can't buy these, the original and the best. Sorry, you H2 and ZH2 owners, but you know it's true. So let me know in the comments what you would do with all those things taken into consideration. Would you sell and keep the money in the bank? Sell and buy a Pikes Peak Multi or a V4 Diavel or a M1000R or should I keep this <laughs> and see what happens? See what happens with the value of these bikes. See if it's going to go up. Maybe keep it for another year and see what happens with the value of these bikes. If you go on the eBay or Auto Trade, there's only ever a couple of these for sale. And the people are holding on to them now a lot more. So yeah, it's it's really difficult. It's, I think it's this bike's at that turning point where it's either well, I think it will always be strong money now. They're never going to go down, but they may start really going up. Don't know. Just my luck to sell it when that starts happening. Neutral. Okay. Oof. Don't drop it, Chopsy.